Hey everybody and welcome to Dominion Cards, the video series where we take a strategic, in-depth look at various cards from the board game Dominion. Today we are looking at Pirate Ship. This is a four-cost action and attack card from Seaside, and it says choose one, plus one coin per coin token on your pirate ship mat, or each other player reveals the top two cards of their deck, trashes one of those treasures that you choose, and discards the rest. And then, if anyone trashed a treasure, you add a coin token to your pirate ship mat. So this is a very wordy card. This might be the second wordiest card in all of Dominion. I think Possession has it beat. But um, yeah, you don't you don't see cards with this much text on it in more modern expansions. They try to be a lot less wordy than this. So some rules clarifications for this card. If you choose the attack... As long as you trashed a treasure from at least one of your opponents, you put a single token on your mat. It does not matter how many opponents had to trash treasures, you only get one token from each play of pirate ship at most. And if you choose to generate money, the tokens stay on the mat. They never come off the mat. Right? They, they sort of accumulate over time and you can never lower it. So it's always only going up, potentially, the amount of money. Let's get straight to the point with Pirate Ship. This is an exceptionally weak card in two-player games. It is considered at the moment in community rankings the second worst card in Seaside. This is a really, really poor card. Now, it has a stackable attack. That means that as you have more players... It can get better because, or at least more impactful, because you are likely to just be hit with it more times earlier on. This is a trashing attack that can destroy your coppers, and it's cheap enough to open with. So if you have everyone go all in on pirate ships, someone can actually get bankrupted fairly quickly, right? This can wipe out all of your money, and now you've just got these turns where you've just got a load of estates and you can't really do much else. But bear in mind that this requires basically everyone to go all in on pirate ships. You sometimes hear from certain gaming groups that they think pirate ship is overpowered, and this is probably what's happened. They're having like four player games and everyone's just buying pirate ship all the time, and then it just annihilates all the money out of people's deck and they can't do anything, right? And it just seems to be completely dominant. And, you know, it can happen in those groups. Uh, that's just the way pirate ship works. But in two player, it's basically awful, this card. Like, absolutely terrible. So it's a lot like Bandit in that it tries to trash treasures from the top of your opponent's deck. And in the Bandit video, we explained that this attack, you normally don't care that much for it with Bandit. Most of the time, you're, you're buying Bandit because you want the gold gaining. So the attack, in general, treasure attacking. Um, sorry, treasure trashing attacks from the top of the deck. These are not very good attacks. Most of the time, players are going to be buying action cards and victory cards. And when you do have to resort to treasures for money, you tend to have a low density of them. This is not always true, but a lot of good effective decks that are engine decks are going to have mostly action density. So that means that it's just harder and harder as the game goes on to actually find treasures to attack. Right? You don't know if the top two cards of your opponent's deck are going to have any treasures in it at all, and the attack can just completely miss. There's also a lot of cards out there that gain you many treasures. Like most expansions have like some form of treasure gainer in it. So you've got Bandit, you've got Courtier, you've got Explorer, you've got Treasure Map, and so on and so forth. So sometimes just replacing treasures when they get trashed is actually pretty easy. But you just play some action and then, ah, oh, there you go, you've got a replacement treasure. So it's not even that threatening all the time. Now, it is a little bit different from Bandit in that the attacker gets to choose which treasure is trashed when both cards come up as treasures and they are different. And that means that it's a little bit better at trashing the best treasures. With Bandit, if, say, a gold and a silver come up, well, the player's usually going to trash the silver and keep the gold, but here you would get to trash the gold instead and let them keep the silver but bear in mind that a lot of the time when you're doing these types of attacks, there is no choice because you're not revealing two different treasures or you're only revealing one treasure or none at all. So this like improvement to the attack is not going to be relevant a lot of the time. 
There's a big flaw in pirate ship, and that is that it trashes your opponent's coppers. Also, the trashing is not optional. As long as a treasure is revealed, you do have to trash something. So that means a lot of the time, pirate ship is going to be trashing your opponent's coppers. Except your opponent usually doesn't want coppers. In fact, in a lot of boards, the main aim that you're trying to do early on is to get rid of your bad starting cards like coppers and estates as quickly as you can. So if you open with pirate ship and you start using the attack option, well, not only are you not getting any immediate benefit from that, you're spending an action and it's not giving you any money right now or drawing you any cards or whatever, but it's also actually improving your opponent's deck by getting rid of their coppers. And that's just absolutely awful. And this is why Pirate Ship is such a bad card, right? You do not want to be improving your opponent's deck with an attack card, but that is what Pirate Ship does in like the, the most typical case, which is that you open with this and you start attacking your opponent. Now, it's not just attacking that it does. It, of course, also gathers tokens, and then you can use Pirate Ship as a way to earn money. But the thing is, is that Pirate Ship gathers tokens very slowly, and you're not even guaranteed to gain a token when you play it with an attack. Right? If you play the attack and it misses, well, not only did you not trash an opponent's treasure, but it, you haven't actually improved the money generation of Pirate Ship. So this sort of has the potential to become really big. Like, you can think that maybe eventually, like, wow, your pirate ship is going to give you five coins when you play it, right? Like, that sounds pretty good. But you think that if you've got pirate ships that are earning you five money when you play them, well, you can't get that money until at least, at the bare minimum, the sixth play of pirate ship in a game. And then there are a lot of games out there where you never play any um, action card six times in one game yes you can have multiple copies of pirate ship but uh, you know like how how long does it take to get there dominion is very fast and running a deck where you are buying all these cards that are doing nothing for you now just so that eventually they will become big money producers like that's really slow and dominion is very fast and so pirate ship usually just can't keep up with the pace of the game it's just real real slow but it's not always bad sometimes pirate ship is actually a very good card and it can be dominant and it can be really strong it doesn't happen very often uh, but it can so when are these situations and it's basically whenever the attack is actually really strong and effective and so this means that your opponent will have already removed their coppers and they got a thin deck, but they still need to use treasures to make money because there's no other way that they are going to be generating money in this game. Typically, you would be looking at a board where the gaining is very limited so that when you do trash one of their treasures, it's going to take them like an entire turn to actually buy a replacement back again. Like, say they only get to gain one card per turn. It's their default buy. Well... You don't want to be rebuying your treasures over and over again. Your deck's going to go nowhere. Sometimes you get special treasures, and that can make the attack hurt more. So potion, platinum, certain heirlooms like magic lamp. There's a lot of examples, but these are probably the most likely ones to make pirate ship useful. Bear in mind that because you get to choose which treasure is trashed, Pirate Ship is a lot more effective at annihilating these special treasures uh, than something like Bandit might be. Now, what you would be doing with Pirate Ship when it's good is that ideally you would be treating the attack as the payload of your engine. Like, you've thinned your deck, you're drawing your deck, and now what are you going to be doing? Well, maybe you're just going to be playing Pirate Ship on your opponent quite a lot. Uh, that's a thing that it could do. Ideally, you have a board where the trashing is really fast, like you've got Chapel or something, so that you can very quickly set up a deck that is just trying to play a bunch of pirate ships every turn. And if you have no treasures left and you are playing like three pirate ship attacks on your opponent, well, they cannot gain any money anymore except through treasures, right? Because their pirate ships aren't going to do anything. And if you've got the head start on gaining some money on your pirate ships or sorry some coin tokens and your opponent hasn't 
then you might be the only person now in the game who is actually able to ever generate any more money. So this is sort of the situation where pirate ship just completely crushes any other way of actually doing anything. You've just got this thin deck, you're drawing it quickly, you're playing like two or three pirate ships, and no one else can actually do anything with any money because it's now the only way that you're ever going to generate any money and you have blocked your opponent from actually gaining any coin tokens. And that is the good case for pirate ship, basically. There is one special interaction to note with pirate ship. There's this project from Renaissance called Capitalism and it makes pirate ship much better. Like It's still usually a pretty weak card, but when pirate ship is strong then capitalism makes it very strong, right? It, it turbocharges that situation where pirate ship is good. Now, the reason why is because when you buy capitalism on your turn, all of your opponent's money-generating actions now also count as treasures. And that means that you effectively get to now annihilate every possible source of generating money. If there's something like Conspirator on the board that's action card money, bang, it's gone now. You know, Minion, boom, get rid of them. You get to trash them all. And of course, Pirate Ship has plus coin written on it as well. So now all your pirate ships are also treasures, and so are your opponents. So your pirate ships can now trash their pirate ships. And because your pirate ships are treasures, it don't cost you an action to play them. So now it's very easy to just play a lot of them every turn. And in an ideal situation, like you just effectively destroy all of your opponent's pirate ships, and they now have no recourse again. You know, it's that same effective use case, but uh, much stronger, basically. Uh, and that's kind of it for Pirate Ship. Like, there's not really that much more to say, because most of the time when Pirate Ship shows up, you are not buying Pirate Ship, because this is a very poor card. I, I don't recommend, especially in two-player games online, if you see Pirate Ship come up, just don't buy it most of the time, and that will do best for you. So what we're going to do now is head over to the online client, we're going to generate some boards with pirate ship in it, and we're going to see if it's any good. So here we have replace as trashing. Um, there is mine, there is potentially native village to just stick cards on the map, but the trashing's really bad here. There is patrol for draw, but the only village is native village, which is kind of like a non-drawing village. Ah, but Patrol does put cards on top of the deck, or they reveals them and lets you reorder them, which means that you can actually set stuff aside with Native Village and sort of get it out of your deck. But the problem there is that it is your only village, so you can't actually keep using it as a village. So that's no good. Um, so what else are we going to do? Maybe we just have to go for a basic money strategy like Patrol Big Money. Perhaps that is all we are doing. Maybe we get to add some treasuries to that? I don't know, though. Because um, like, what's the alternative? Artisan treasury feels awful, um, and it sort of falls apart pretty quickly, and you're not really getting rid of these coppers. Hmm. There's no other way we can reveal the top card of our deck, so we sort of just don't really get to use Native Village very effectively. Unless you have like a 5-2 and you can buy one and you can set aside some things and then you treat it as a dud card for a while when you're at risk of actually setting aside something decent. I'm thinking this is just Patrol Big Money. So Pirate Ship isn't very good here and the reason why it's no good is because you can't really do much with pirate ship when there's no real trashing. Yes you can replace coppers into native village, you can replace your estates into like poacher, but it's still not very good, like workshop's very poor here, courtier is pretty poor as well, uh, mine is quite bad. Uh, is this a mine game? I don't think that beats Patrol Big Money, to be honest. Um, Patrol Big Money is actually not bad if you're not trashing your victory cards as well. So I think this is just Patrol Big Money. You ignore Pirate Ship. It's a weak board, but it's not the right type of weak board for Pirate Ship. If there was like Money Lender, then maybe this is a Pirate Ship game, except your opponent would just do Artisan Treasury. So no, like you don't touch Pirate Ship here. It's a pretty poor board. 
but pirate ship is no good. Here I spot straight away Ambassador and Steward as two very powerful thinners. Well, obviously we are using Ambassador. Uh, there is no village. And what does that mean for us? There is no draw. That's not true. That's technically Steward, but it's not very good to draw. <laughs> there is... um. Is this Ambassador to get thin... A bandit to gain a bunch of golds and then we possibly add in a replace and we might occasionally uh, replace a gold into a province i think that might be what we're doing here so there is quick thinning there is no plus buy that's not true there is courtier like why are we not going for pirate ship here isn't this a good board for pirate ship right there's no good engine and there's strong treasure or the strong trashing early on and you're reliant on treasures for money well the problem is is that a bandit might actually just be better right that's the problem like you can't there's no village so in order for pirate ship to be an effective source of money for you that will actually win you the game you need to have a lot of treasures trashed with pirate ship you sort of want to get pirate ship almost up to like eight which is going to take a very, very long time. That is ridiculous when you can only play one pirate ship per turn. Meanwhile, Bandit gets some golds and you might be able to occasionally replace those golds into provinces. So your opponent is actually going to be doing all this and like occasionally cursing you. And if you get cursed, well, you want to play Ambassador to remove the curses and now you don't get to play pirate ship anymore. So the lack of village really hurts pirate ship here. So I think you ignore pirate ship and you're just going to go Ambassador to Thin get some mills maybe and that will help you hit five to get to bandit and then you get a replace and then you're going to play bandit mostly and you might occasionally replace some gold so you get replaced a little bit later i think but you might eventually get one yeah so no pirate ship here either on this board we have no trashing at all. We do have... Oh, it's no trashing in this sea hag. Uh, there is one, two, three types of village. And there is warehouse and cellar for sifting. But there is no draw at all. Uh, this is a board where treasury seems like it actually might be decent. Um, sea hag is going to be decent. So maybe we go for lighthouse as well. Um, we don't want to do pirate ship because we don't want to be actually trashing our opponent's coppers. That is very helpful for our opponent here. So do not touch pirate ship. But I would like to open... Do I start with lighthouse? I think I do. I open lighthouse sea hag. I start buying like warehouses and more lighthouses. Um, and then eventually I claw my way somehow, probably with a silver or two, up to treasury and then i'm buying a bunch of treasuries and for a while those will let me start doing stuff like buying more treasuries or buying some golds and then hopefully i eventually get the deck to a stage where i can just like start buying single province and it's always a shame when i do because the treasuries collapse but yeah i'm gonna spend a while just trying to cycle to play this one sea hag a bunch and then after that, it's just clawing my way to province, which I think I can do because you will have, you'll just start stacking up treasuries and then you get to buy a province now and then, but it's going to be really slow. It's not going to be great. Lighthouse is not going to be brilliant defense, but it will prevent a bunch of curses. So you are going to get some. Um, yeah, so you ignore pirate ship here. You do not want to thin your opponent's coppers at any cost. That is a massive help to them in this game. So don't touch it. Here there is no village at all. We have a sentry to get thin, and there's also potentially island as well. What else are you doing on this board? Oh boy. Um, wow, so many bad cards. Um, <laughs> treasure map. So this actually looks like the kind of board where pirate ship suddenly gets very good, because your opponent can't do anything except basically 
like courtyard big money is really the only thing that's going on here outside of pirate ship and i would like to get thin with sentry and then try and hobble my opponent's courtyard big money via pirate ship that's what i want to do and that's actually going to work like it will take a while but you cripple these basic money strategies like if you get thin you start playing your pirate ship every turn now you only get to play one per turn maybe that's not good enough thinking about it like i need a village for this to be good there is no village oh no um Whew. Yeah, that's a problem, actually. Maybe you still don't get to pirate ship here. Mm, is one pirate ship going to really harm Courtyard Big Money? Because the Courtyard Big Money player, uh, they will thin some coppers, uh, but I don't think they're that worried. And if worse comes to worst, well, Courtyard will help you set up treasure map if you're desperate. Like, uh, maybe. Like, it might help set aside or top deck a treasure map to get a better chance of colliding them. I think you want to basically start with sentry as you can. So you open a double silver, I guess. I don't think... I, do I even bother with island initially? I'd rather just get a sentry and trash the estates, I think. Hmm, maybe you just buy Island a bunch. Like, maybe that's a thing that you just do here, right? I could see that being the case. Hmm. Um, yeah, maybe. Like, maybe you open Silver Island, you just keep the points because it's going to be, no matter what, a game that is highly likely to get an extended end game, and then the Island points are relevant. But you're still going to thin with Sentry. You're going to be buying some of these and then you kind of decide what to do from there. Maybe you get two treasure maps. Maybe you get a courtyard. Like, I think Pirate Ship might still lose here. There's no village. It's going to take too long to build it up. Like, it's really slow. You can get thin. You can play Pirate Ship every turn. It's not great, though. Um, yeah, I guess it could go either way for Pirate Ship here. But I think it's still not good enough to actually be worthwhile. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is the ideal pirate ship game. It doesn't feel great. It feels like it could be better for it. But I could see it happening. Maybe you have enough money that what you do is, after you've thinned, you have like two silvers, you are playing pirate ship, and then you're just buying island every turn, and then you're looking to island your islands. Because you could build up a deck that has silver, silver, pirate ship island island like almost like an island golden deck oh no but you you would have to be playing an island every other turn and then you're only paying playing pirate ship half the time is the problem yeah okay so pirate ship's pretty bad here as well i think we got close but i think i'm not bothering with pirate ship on this board uh, there's just there's better use of my plus action to be honest that's the big problem Or my one action, not plus action. So here's the last board. We have Money Lender to get thin. There is Swindler about, and the only way to get thin is Money Lender. So I do kind of like opening Swindler here. I really want to get Curses into my opponent's deck because they can't do anything about them when I do that. So I'm buying Swindler. Maybe I'm going Swindler Ironworks. I pick up a money lender with the ironworks in case they collide early on, and then I start gaining some villages. I have diplomat for draw. I can do village diplomat if the swindler's being played. Maybe I get to play diplomat as a village now and then. And what happens? We end up thinning our deck. We use ironworks to gain a bunch of these cards, and then we could probably silver merchant for a bit. That's probably going to be what we do. And maybe we pick up a bandit and we start playing that. I don't think pirate ship is very good because it is very easy. If they go pirate ship, you get another ironworks and you just pick up a load of action cards and pirate ship's never hitting. You do have to worry if you've got a silver for merchant, you might want to get another silver. But you can respond to the pirate ship by getting bandit, honestly. Like the problem with the pirate ship here is that it's never actually going to hit anything because um, you're going to be running fairly thin on treasures no matter what. And it's just going to be too slow. Like, it's it's never going to be able to build up because it just keeps whiffing all the time. So you can't pirate ship here. Otherwise, there is this ironwork swindler village diplomat merchant thing that is going on. And you're trying to get as thin as you can. 
with money lender, but you're not going to get super thin. You will have some curses. You will have your estate. Oh, well, you know, that's just how it's going to go. So there we are. So pirate ship was, uh, I think, in the end, ignored on all of those boards, as I expected. There was one where maybe it was questionable whether you do it or not, that fourth game. But otherwise, uh, pirate ship is a no-go. It's just very bad card and you should ignore it, basically. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this was useful for you and I will see you next time. Goodbye.